Item number SCP-6000 Security Level 1 Containment Class Keter Disruption Class Amida Risk Class Critical Special Containment Procedures Joint Task Force Omega-100 Last Stand has been established in cooperation with the following organizations The Global Occult Coalition Pentagram The People's Liberation Army Paranormal Force GRU Division P until containment is established or the foundation falls, MTF New 7 Hammerdown has been folded into JTF Omega 100 and placed under the direct oversight of 056. Foundation facilities in active areas are being evacuated and replaced with contingents of JTF Omega 100. In accordance with Deployment Plan 6000, Description SCP 6000 is a Daybreak Empire. As described in SCP-140, expected to fully materialize within consensus reality on March 20th, 2022. SCP-140 has fully breached containment and will result in Incident 140CK, causing SCP-6000 to manifest. The Overseer Council has preemptively declared the event a BK-class broken masquerade scenario due to the extensive use of Hostile and reality altering anomalies by SCP 6000, even into the modern day. Addendum 6001 Threat Assessment A joint working group between the Department of Analytics and the Department of Applied Force produced a report outlining the primary dangers associated with a modern day day fight empire. It was based on information from SCP 140. Archaeological finds, study of Daedric inscriptions and documents, and parastatistical data models. Description, threat, notes. Ground force, high. Estimated active personnel of 2.4 million. Full access to modern equipment via pictures from foreign suppliers. Air force, medium. Comparatively small, but modern air force. Existence of stealth technology contested, though anomalous modification of aircraft is possible. Navy, low. The control area is largely landlocked. Outside alliances, high. SCP-6000 will likely have extensive control or influence over nearby countries, far beyond its boundaries. Operations are underway to preserve geopolitical structure and prevent immediate Cascade into an SK class dominance shift scenario. Infrastructure High. Military organs should have no difficulty transferring troops and equipment even in the event of the multi front war. Espionage Unknown. Existence of a national spy agency likely. Further details about capabilities are unknown. Humanoid modification Medium. Able to cause significant changes to individuals for specific purposes. Tactical possibilities unknown. Apex tier. Peripotent entity collusion. High. Destructive ability believed to be enhanced through packs with the Scarlet King. Biological weaponry. High. Historical records show highly deferred anomalous transfiguration abilities. Possibility of plant or fungus based contingent likely. Nuclear weaponry. Severe. Day fight control of nuclear weapons and ICBMs for delivery is a certainty. Addendum 6002 Inciting Incident. The existence of SCP 6000 is a consequence of a terminal containment fleet featuring SCP 140. The original anomalous print run of a chronicle of the Devas published by SCP-140-A consisted of 75 copies. Of these, 49 were destroyed by SCP-140's anomalous capabilities. Foundation agents were able to locate 20 copies and safely destroy them, leaving 6 copies remaining. SCP-140 and 5 additional copies outside of containment collected redesignated SCP-140-B. One of these uncontained instances was in the personal collection of Richard Bruce, 11th Earl of Elgin, 
unknown Marshall Carter and Dark Associate. Although Bruce observed the proper protocols for handling his copy of SCP-140B and did not allow any liquids nearby, general security on his property was lax. As a result, a group of lightly armed anomalous individuals were able to break into his estate and steal it. Following the theft, Bruce immediately contacted Marshall Carter and Doc to report the incident. Given the danger inherent in SCP-140, MCND contacted the Foundation through a liaison, agreeing to allow the Foundation to contain it upon recovery. Mobile Task Force Mu-3 Highest Bidders was deployed to find the SCP-140-B instance. It was quickly determined that it had been stolen by a set of the children of the Scarlet King, intending to use the SCP-140-B instance to resurrect the Fight Empire, where the Scarlet King was worshipped permanently. MTF Mu-3 tracked the cult to a house in Elgin Moree, Scotland, and attempted to intervene. However, they were too late and arrived to find that the ritual had been completed. Meanwhile, surveillance footage showed that, shortly before their arrival, SCP-140 spontaneously combusted our containment. Note, the Global Occult Coalition, Horizon Initiative, and Serpent's Hand, each of which owned a copy of the Chronicles of the Davis, confirmed that their own copies combusted at the same time as SCP-140. The location of the fifth SCP-140-B instance is unknown. It is assumed to have combusted as well. As best as can be determined by Foundation investigators, the ritual involved the ignition of SCP-140-B to bring forth the one true empire of this hoary and tired parchment. Pharmaturgic sympathy bonds caused the simultaneous destruction of other copies of the Chronicles of the Davis. Following the ritual's completion, all known Davis artifacts began emitting Omicron pan Hume radiation. The ritual was performed on the winter solstice, defined in a ritual as symbolically equivalent to midnight, but is not expected to take full effect until the vernal equinox. Likewise defined as symbolic of dawn, when the Davite Empire will manifest in consensus reality at once, defined as awakening following a deep sleep of fugue. Addendum 6003 Foundation Briefing The following bulletin was sent to all Foundation personnel to brief them on the impending manifestation of SCP-140 in baseline reality. From 051 To all staff Subject Impending CK Class Scenario They Fight Empire Date 28th of December 2021 To all members of the Foundation In three months time there will be a CK class scenario of unprecedented magnitude. On March 20th, 2022, the Dayfight Empire will manifest in present consensus reality. Current estimates suggest that its territorial extent will stretch from central Siberia and will place most of modern Kazakhstan. For the benefit of present now unfamiliar with the Dayfight Empire or SCP-140, a brief summary follows. The Dayfight Empire would be one of the most hostile and anomalous nations to have ever existed. Several novel thaumaturgic practices were developed in this area, including hemomancy, herbomancy, and necromancy. The state religion enforces worship of the Scarlet King, a violent, defying figure. An extended version of this group, known as the Children of the Scarlet King, has attempted to cause world-ending events on several occasions by summoning the deity. Their anomalous warfare capabilities will have been greatly enhanced through access to modern technology and weaponry. The danger or nature of such enhancements are unknown, but are believed to be extensive. All existing exploratory research projects are suspended. All non-essential containment work is suspended. Sites have been assigned specific tasks to protect as much of humanity as is possible. Expect a bulletin detailing your new priorities. On March 19th, all essential personnel will be moved to reality-anchored sites to provide immunity to the CK class scenario. Class A or designated personnel will be relocated to extra-dimensional sites. We are currently working on installing additional Zanx Anaskoskos 
constant tempo sinks to resist retroactive disruption to the Foundation's existence. We will survive the reappearance of the Deified Empire, regardless of what happens on March 20th. Normalcy will be protected. The consensus will be maintained from the desk of O51. Secure. Contain. Protect. Alert. Reach has begun. Item number SCP-6000 Containment Class Neutralized Security Level 1 Special Containment Procedures Outside of archival documentation, SCP-6000-A should be referred to by its legal name rather than as an SCP object. It is not considered anomalous. Information regarding SCP-6000 is classified Level 1 and available for research. Description SCP-6000 was a CK-class scenario which resulted in the re-manifestation of SCP-6000-A, a UN organized state officially known as the Republic of Devastan. Predecessor nations include the Deified Empire, various tribal sects and its membership within the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, all of which were forcibly suppressed from consensus reality until SCP-6000 occurred on March 20th, 2022. SCP-6000 occurred due to the destruction of SCP-140, a text which purported to describe the historical deified empire. It is now known that SCP-140 was highly inaccurate. Further, it was discovered that the former prevailing theory as to the operation of SCP-140 that it was restoring an ontologically annihilated civilization into being was only partially correct. It was also the phenomena that had initially ontologically annihilated deified history. The complete destruction of all copies of SCP-140 undid its effects and ontologically reinstated SCP-6000-A to its original form. Most Foundation installations and personnel were reality anchored in preparation for this event, and thus were unaffected. As a result, the internal consensus of the Foundation is now at odds with greater consensus reality. Discrepancies between reality have yet to be fully reconciled. The Foundation is currently working towards briefing personnel on the inaccuracies described in SCP-140. Addendum 6001 Historical Comparisons The following table outlines inaccuracies described in SCP-140 and the truth is present in the legitimate Devastan. SCP-140 Previous Reality SCP-6000 Consensus Reality the history of the day fights is remarkably consistent, displaying little evolution over time. Completely unsupported, day fight culture has transformed significantly as technology and social conditions changed. This lack of evolution is believed to correspond to a lack of imagination on the part of SCP 140A. A day fight empire contained an imperial cult to the Scarlet King, which survived to modern day as the children of the Scarlet King. This cult focused on violent masculinity as embodied in the Scarlet King. The Scarlet King never existed. The myth of the Scarlet King was invented by SCP-148 to downplay the leadership of the Uptong and Saw, the seven matriarchal rulers who led the Grand Canaanite of the Deva. Modern scholarship translates Uptong and Saw as seven mothers. A less accurate translation would be as the seven brides. SCP 140A misinterpreted this name either intentionally or accidentally, and subverted the day fight patriarchy in favor of the more familiar Western patriarchy. The day fight empire had one of the largest slave populations of any civilization in history, with approximately 75% of the total population being enslaved. True, however, shortly following this peak, a slave revolution destroyed the Deified Empire. All successor states have defined themselves as heirs to this revolution and abolish slavery in all forms, save for the short-lived Kofar sects, 
which collapsed following a military coup. The day fights were led by a long-lived and anomalous human subspecies known as the Deva, which practiced extensive cannibalism. The Deva were based on humans who styled themselves as divine and were known to practice cannibalism. However, the Deva ruling class was obliterated during the slave revolution that destroyed the Deifite Empire. Later Deifite nations used the title of Deva for various leadership positions, but these later Deva were had little relation to the original ruling class and do not style themselves as divine. SCP-076 is a humanoid anomaly within Foundation containment, an immortal warrior only capable of thinking about violence and farming. SCP-073 is another immortal humanoid, also in containment, believed to be the brother of SCP-076. The names are believed to be Elp Lachelle and Sharon, respectively, and they are suspected to be related to Aborn King from Genesis. Up Lachelle and Sharon are they fight cultural heroes with no relation to any Abrahamic faith. Together, they led the slave rebellion against the Deifite Empire. Neither was anomalous. The Deifites practice an anomalous form of heteroculture, capable of creating sapient and highly anomalous plant matter with various effects. Various anomalies contained under the designations SCP-3140, SCP-392, and SCP-3399. They fight hydric culture is highly advanced, but not anomalous. Techniques used in the nation have formed the basis for general hydric culture around the world. Addendum 6002 Profile of SCP-140A In the months following SCP-6000, multiple Foundation investigations were launched to explain the massive discrepancy between the observed devastating nation and the country described in SCP-140. One such inquiry was into SCP-140A, the author of SCP-140, who Foundation historians suspected of having authorial bias. An investigation team determined that SCP-140A was Thomas Bruce, 6th Earl of Elgin, an ancestor of Richard Bruce. It was originally believed that Thomas Bruce had sponsored up Lachelle Coex in publishing a work which described the Deifite Empire. Analyzing records present within Davistan, it has been determined that up Lachelle Coex never actually existed and was merely Bruce's pen name. In 1786, Thomas Bruce visited the Grand Canite of the Deva. At the time, the country was significantly reduced from the height of its former power, the historical Deifite Empire, and existed as bubbling regional powers. Bruce was fascinated by the past of the country to the point of completely ignoring its present state. He wrote the Chronicles of the Deva, which ignored most of the country's history and blended its popular mythology into the nation's history. A single copy of this text from the original print run of 75 copies was preserved in the Deifite National Library, allowing it to survive both CK class scenarios. It is believed that Bruce made contact with an unknown occultist for the printing of the Chronicles of the Devas. An extensive ritual was performed, and the printing began on June 20th, 1788, the summer solstice. Soon after, SCP-6000 began on September 22nd, 1788. The Optomo Equinox. This event fully removed Deifite predecessor states from reality, transforming the inaccurate ethnography into the only ethnography. Addendum 6003 Dr. Judd Lachelle's Testimony. The Overseer Council asked Dr. Judd Lachelle Pan, a devastating member of the Foundation. In the wake of SCP 6000, it was discovered that the Foundation had two facilities, Site 761 and Area 25 within Devastan. Personnel located there were only aware of a reality where Devastan had continually existed, but were fully loyal to the Foundation. To give a briefing on its national history in the immediate wake of SCP-6000. The following is a transcript of the briefing that he presented to the Council on March 21st, 2022. Hello everyone. 
Hope you are well. I recognize some of you, but the feeling is not mutual. You've asked me to give a briefing on my home country, which none of you knew existed. To make it worse, you were more familiar with a wildly inaccurate 18th century English Orientalist scandalous and highly embellished depiction of our country, which was in fact anomalous and removed our country from existence entirely. This version of our country, if it had ever existed, would have been the bloodiest and most anomalous civilization in the world. You called me here to describe what my Devastan is. I'm not going to do that. You'll find out what we're like later. No, today I'm going to argue that we deserve to live, because that's the real reason you called me here, to decide what to do in the wake of this C.K. class scenario. I don't even know where to begin with that. I think I'll start with myself while I'm here. In the time and world I remember, we were not expecting anything to happen on the Equinox. As such, we had reduced security in the Dempo exclusion in reality anchoring sites, and more personnel allowed outside them, or at normal levels, of course. I happened to be outside a site at a time, traveling between one. Then 6,000 hit, and now we don't agree about anything. So, if you have that as a problem, we clearly had more consensus reality on our side. It's everybody else in the world who isn't a skipper. Than you do. So, so we're here to stay, I think. You have to let us stay. It's your, our, whole ethos. And that means I need to give you a crash course into our history. My people, my nation, we are not anomalous. If the briefing you gave me is true, and I really have no idea, because it was incredibly brief, then we have been on the wrong side of the joke for something along the line of 200 years. We're the victims here, and I'm worried that your knee-jerk reaction will be to play the joke again, because that's what you do. I've dealt with all of you before in my reality, the one I remember. I guess those versions of you are lost, but let's be honest, you haven't changed. None of you have changed in the entire time you've been alive. That's centuries for some of you, right? We're a peaceful country, if it wasn't for the actions of a single Orientalist and his book, a book I read as an academic curiosity, we wouldn't be sitting here today. You wouldn't know the difference between us and anywhere else in the world. Yes, we had a bloody past, and not without consequence. Yes, the Dayfight Empire had one of the highest rates of slavery in the world of any country ever. Perhaps it was only higher in Sparta, with the Helots. But you know what happened next? We ripped the Davis apart and burned their palaces to the ground. A single prince decided to eat an enslaved child when there are more slaves than free men. So his estate rose up and hanged him. And then because there are more slaves than Davis, that initial rebellion spread outward and toppled the entire empire. The true history of our nation is not one of eternal slavery, no. We were the first nation in the world to outlaw the practice, and we never let it return. But a single man saw that past, that single moment in which a prince ate a child, and he stretched it into eternity. He made the past of the country, that slavery was the backbone of our entire past and the present. The revolution wasn't salacious enough for him. So he took the moment in time that was, and he made it the only image of the country, the only one that could exist, but without the release of revolution. The poverty, but without consequence, and its spy was from there, becoming worse and worse, because we had no voice, nothing to say, stop, it wasn't like that. It was nothing but tragedy what he did. So, I come before you today, and I have to beg you, do not repeat what he did. Do not do the same things. Do not force us back into the dark. Please. From 0510 to Prisoner Figured you may be curious about the music. See attached file. 0510 Security Level 0 Item Number SCP-6000 Object Class Safe Secondary Class 
Follow me. Special containment procedures. Foundation personnel maintain sub for television broadcasting towers to transmit SCP-6000 globally. Per project based sub-protocol, only level 5 personnel may access this file. Description. SCP-6000 is a 3 minute long Cognito hazardous video of the Applied Force Department Symphony performing Never My God to Thee. The video influences the autonomic nervous system and hypothalamic trajectory adrenal axis, inhibiting fight or flight responses to stressors and regulating cortisol production. Upon Ethics Committee approval, the O5 Council commissioned the Memetics and Info Hazards Division to develop SCP-6000 for Project ASA. Exposure testing began on volunteer researchers after performance and recording. Addendum 6001 Testing Log Subject Dr. Chuck Ferguson Background Ferguson married his husband seven years prior to testing and had adopted an infant son three years prior. When he reports high relationship and household satisfaction, substantiated by testimony from close friends, he frequently stresses over a lack of interaction with his son and believes his husband may hold grudges against him due to this. Results Ferguson texts his husband, asking if they can discuss the situation later that day. Ferguson reports an in-depth, reflective conversation spanning their relationship history, familiar pasts, and favorite television programs. Among this, Ferguson's husband reassures that he holds no grudges over his more dominant role in their son's upbringing. Being Ferguson's government job, see Family Disclosure Protocol, However, he does suggest hiring a babysitter, which Ferguson states he'll contemplate. Subject: Agents of Vina Cortez Background Cortez immigrated from the Philippines to the United States after college, a decision heavily protested by her mother. With her enrollment in the United States military and subsequent foundation employment, her relationship with her mother grew increasingly estranged. Cortez regrets not contacting her mother, but fears a further divide in the relationship if she does so. Results Cortez calls her mother, who expresses shock from the sudden contacts. They set up a video call together for the day after testing. Cortez reports an initially stilted but progressively intimate conversation. Her mother interested in American life and Cortez in Filipino life. When addressing the initial distress over the immigration, Cortez's mother apologizes for her comments, noting how long she made them, but admitting she feared how Cortez would adjust. Subject: Dr. Everett Mann Background Mann, continuing the eccentricity of his caretaker uncle, perset divergent ethics from societal norms. After Mann's uncle died incarcerated, Mann faced social ostracization from peers. In response, man sought comfort in science and learning. While man cites genius as diverting potential friends, others testify man outright rejecting social advances in favor of scientific pursuits. Results Man steps outside the testing facility, finds the nearest cliff face, and sits on the edge, silently staring at the night sky. When asked what he thought about, man states, we can all ascend. The next day, he sits at a crowded table in a Site-19 cafeteria, facilitating awkward but genuine conversation on rat biology. Addendum 6002 Project Acer Briefing Project Acer is a foundation-led initiative to comfort humanity in response to a predictable, singular, and widely publicized XK end of the world scenario. Once such an event grows imminent, all Foundation personnel will gain access to files on Project Acer anomalies. Item number. SCP-6000 Object Class Safe Site Responsible 
GPWLTB Site 70. Director, Dr. Cyan Stevens. Research Head, Technician Fern Paracha. Assigned Task Force, not applicable. Security Level 1. Threat Level, Yellow. Special Containment Procedures, by order of the Site 17 Ethics Committee, Cell 223 of Facility C is to remain empty. SCP-6000 is neither to be obstructed nor penetrated. Description SCP-6000 is a circular window currently located on the northwestern wall of Cell 223. It consists of a single circular pane of glass with no gridding or opening mechanism. When damage or obstructed from either end, SCP-6000 will disappear, reappearing in place of a nearby section of wall. The disappearance and subsequent reappearance of SCP-6000 appeared to be instantaneous, and the area previously displaced is restored upon migration. SCP-6000 appears exclusively on exterior walls, with preference for rooms with little to no natural lighting. Offices, dormitories, and containment cells are frequently targeted by SCP-6000, comprising 94% of all manifestations. Humans and sapient entities within affected rooms are subject to a minor compulsion that semi-frequently directs them to look into SCP-6000. Time exposed to sunlight is negatively correlated with susceptibility to this effect, and those assigned an unrelated task are less susceptible than idle subjects at all levels. Among non-human and E-class populations, reaping has been frequently observed. Addendum 6000A The following is a photograph of SCP-6000 taken in its current position. Personnel are advised to report any lingering effects to the Department of Psychiatrics. Item number SCP-6463 Containment Class Pending Special Containment Procedures Dr. Charles Gears is to monitor and survey SCP-6463 for topological or interdimensional irregularity. The establishing contact with the Foundation is to be considered highest priority. Update Not applicable Description SCP-6463 is the professional update designation for Dimension 882R53, an interdimensional plane of unknown size. SCP-6463 resembles a salt flat, with its surface being solid and exhibiting near-perfect reflectivity. The surface is also noted to have a salty taste. Entities within SCP-6463 are believed to not be affected by any form of energy expenditure and decay, as several electronic devices brought into SCP-6463 have been in continuous function for at least 296,516 years without fail, and people inside it do not appear to age or need sustenance making them biologically immortal. SCP-6463 is largely featureless, with the exception of a single tree. Henceforth, SCP-6463-A, which exhibits a cognitive hazardous effect, which makes the observer always aware of its location, regardless of distance or visibility. Update. The body of Dr. Charles Gears was found leaning against the base of SCP-6463-A. The timestamp of this file's last update, alongside the subsequent autopsy report, and 1,779,095 recovered video logs on his drive indicated he died at approximately 450,000 years of age. From natural causes.
Item number SCP-6669 Object Class Cutter Special Containment Procedures SCP-6669 and SCP-6669-1 are subject to STRL Class Academic Censorship. Booster probes are to be dispatched whenever necessary to keep SCP-6669 instances hidden behind suitable trans-Neptunian objects. This is considered priority tau for Outer Solar System Division. In the event that additional SCP-6669 instances are detected approaching the Solar System, emergency deployment of disposable probes is authorized to divert the instances away from the Solar System. Investigation into SCP-6669-1 is to be assigned Priority Sigma for the Department of Extrasolar Activities. Description SCP-6669 are massive solar sails, measuring larger than 100 kilometers in diameter, suspending an uplong payload approximately 1 kilometer long and 300 meters in diameter. Spectral analyses have determined that the objects are coated in reflective aluminum layers on every surface. But exposed underlying material cannot be conclusively analyzed by current technology. There are three known instances of SCP-6669 in the Soul System. Designated SCP-6669-A, B, and C. All of these instances are situated within the Heliopause Note region of space where the pressure of solar wind become equal to the pressure of the interstellar medium. Due to the solar system's movement through the galaxy, the shape of this region is asymmetric, with regions at the direction of soul's movement being closer to soul than the opposite direction. Approximately 120 astronomical units from Earth, all attempts to communicate with these instances have been unsuccessful. SCP-6669 instances carry large collections of dormant and active microorganisms within their payload, all capable of either thermosynthesis or radiosynthesis, utilizing energy and nutrients emitted through unknown means from its core. Analysis of data obtained through scans and samples from micrometeorite cracks suggest that these microorganisms are capable of consuming a large breadth of material to support their complex internal ecosystem. It is hypothesized that if an instance of SCP-6669 is to be allowed to survive an impact or land on a suitable celestial body, these microorganisms would begin to convert the celestial body into a functional biosphere, presumed the ideal for habitation of SCP-6669 creators. SCP-6669-1 is a megastructure of presumed alien origin located in the redacted star system, be parsecs from the soul system. SCP-6669-1 is comprised of a toroidal structure estimated to be at least 600 kilometers in diameter and a central launch facility in its center measuring in excess of 1,000 kilometers. Approximately once every three years, instances of SCP-6669 are launched at near light speed from the launch facility towards indeterminate targets. It is currently unknown how SCP-6669-1 chooses to target for these launches. Given the velocity of these launches, and the construction of SCP-6669 instances, it is unknown whether any of their payloads would survive an impact with the targets or recently slowed down to land using their sails alone. While SCP-6669-C was prevented from entering the solar system by the Foundation, it is currently unknown why and how SCP-6669-A and B failed to cross the copper belt into the inner solar system. Due to its distance, contact with SCP-6669-1 is currently impossible. Should the object attempt to make contact with human civilization, or should humanity expand in its direction, it would likely result in Scenario G-87.
alien thought process, mostly peaceful, of theoretical human interstellar civilization contact catalog. Discovery prior to the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope in April 1990, the Foundation had only been aware of SCP 6669A and B instances as trans Neptunian objects with unusually high albedo. The images and measurement captured from Hubble Space Telescope and later Foundation Astrospheric Nano Satellite Imaging System confirmed that the instances are in fact further and thus larger than previously thought. The newly formed Outer Solar System Division was immediately tasked to research and conceal these instances. On January 20 beep, SCP 6669C was detected approaching the Solar System by Observatory for Relativistic and Luminal Anomalies. Emergency deployment of experimental probe equipped with diminished inertia controlled kinetic energy transducers was authorized to break the instance and prevent it from entering the inner soul system. The probe succeeded in safely breaking the instance into less than 0.001% the speed of light, preventing its entry to the soul system. The instance then deployed its solar sail from its folded state. Using the data acquired from observation of SCP 6669C, the Data High Interest Object Monitoring System circulated the trajectory it took and traced it back to the redacted star system, where subsequent observations detected the existence of SCP 6669 1. Item number SCP-6995 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures To prevent instances of SCP-6995 from recurring, the Foundation will encourage the legalization and regulation of recreational cannabis throughout the United States via front organizations and covert funding of cannabis legalization initiatives. In the event that SCP-6995 manifests outside the United States in the future, the Foundation will use similar non-anonymous methods to encourage jurisdictions surrounding the manifestation location to legalize and regulate cannabis as well. Foundation agents embedded in the United States cannabis industry are currently monitoring select adult use dispensaries for recurrences of SCP-6995. Any SCP-6995 instances found are to be confiscated prior to sale. A semi-permanent containment team has been assigned to Ontario, Oregon. A semi-permanent containment team has been assigned to Ontario, Oregon due to the high volume of SCP-6995 instances that manifest there. Update 24th of January 2021 any SCP-6995 instances sent to Foundation sites are to be destroyed. Consumption by personnel is prohibited. Description SCP-6995 is an anomalous strain of cannabis indica that displays antimimetic properties whenever cultivated or consumed in jurisdictions where the possession, consumption, and or cultivation of recreational cannabis is illegal. SCP-6995 takes the form of any number of retail consumer cannabis products, flour, seeds, edibles, vapor pens, cottages, etc. Branded as been produced by the company Cannabin Cot Needle. All instances are labeled with the strange flavor name Cannabin Cot Needle OG. No such company is known to exist in any jurisdiction where medical or recreational cannabis is legal, and a physical location, if any, where SCP-6995 instances are produced has yet to be found. When a person consumes an SCP-6995 instance in any jurisdiction where the act is illegal, the SCP-6965 instance and any byproducts of its consumption, e.g. smoke and vapor, will remain entirely undetectable by all observers. Perception of the subject will be altered 
via anonymous means to exclude SCP-6995 instances, use of non-anonymous smoking materials to consume SCP-6995 instances results in the perception that the subject is consuming tobacco instead. Additionally, SCP-6995 instances display a secondary anti-mimetic effect that is active at all times. Said effect renders SCP-6995 instances undetectable under all circumstances. Though the secondary effect is not as precisely measurable as the first, persons with the following traits are known to be susceptible to it. All active members of local, national, and international law enforcement organizations in jurisdictions where recreational cannabis is illegal. Individuals who strongly oppose the legalization and or use of cannabis for recreational purposes. Individuals who find cannabis personally distasteful. Individuals who feel strongly compelled to report all crimes to local law enforcement regardless of severity. SCP-6995 instances manifest at adult-use cannabis dispensaries at for the jurisdictions where recreational cannabis is illegal. When questioned, employees will claim the products were delivered as part of a recent wholesale purchase but will be unable to recall the details of said purchase. Employees will stock SCP-6995 instances with other similar products, but will display no knowledge of the anomalous properties and will not attempt to compel customers to purchase cannabis cognito products in place of other brands. Locations where cannabis cognito branded products have been acquired include Benjamin Washington, 22nd of December 2014, 3.5 gram dry cannabis flower. First known SCP-6995 instance, recurrences of SCP-6995 instances at Benjamin dispensaries ceased in October 2015 when adult-use cannabis dispensaries opened in Oregon. Antonito, Colorado, 3rd of April 2016, 1 gram of 1 gram concentrated cannabis vapor cartridge, Huntington, Oregon, 31st of March, 2018. Five cannabis cookies shaped similar to question marks. West Endeavor, Nevada. 22nd of January, 2020. Cannabis cotton branded glassware used for concentrated cannabis consumption. Dabbing. non anomalous when used with cannabis products that are not SCP-6995 instances. Ontario, Oregon. 2019 to present, numerous instances at all dispensaries in the city. Currently, the location where SCP-6995 instances most frequently manifested. Extensive testing has confirmed that SCP-6995 instances display no anomalous properties besides their anti-memetic capabilities, with THC strength varying from 20 to 30 percent in flower products and 75 to 95 percent in concentrated products. No means have been found to prevent instances of SCP-6995 from recurring aside from the legalization of adult use cannabis cells in jurisdictions that border its manifestation locations. To date, all SCP-6995 instances have ceased to manifest once the dispensaries it appeared in begin to border a jurisdiction where cannabis can be legally purchased. Experimental Data D-237611 U.S. Highway 285 New Mexico near the Colorado State Line 24th of May 2016 Subject is instructed to consume cannabis flower 10 minutes before driving. Subject is then pulled over by police due to tail light that was broken for purposes of experiment. Despite being physically impaired and smelling strongly of cannabis, subject is treated as sober and fully alert by responding police officer. Successful baseline test. Senior researcher Martinez. Central Park, New York City, New York. Spring to summer 2017. Researcher Martinez 
counterfeit seven cannabis plant derived from SCP-6995 seed instances by the use of Class W nestics. All plants are cultivated in open view and frequently tended to. Odor emanating from the plants is only detectable by researcher Martinez, and he is perceived as cultivating non-cannabis plants, despite local prohibitions on personal plant cultivation in Central Park. Observers do not find the activity noteworthy. D991327, Tokyo, Japan, 21st of October, 2018. Subject takes SCP-6995 instances through LAX Airport in Los Angeles and boards flight to Tokyo, Japan. After arriving, subject openly consumes flower instance of SCP-6995 in the interior of Haneda Airport remains undetected. Successful International Baseline Test D-432777 Chicago, Illinois 2355 31st of December 2019 to 100 hours 5 minutes 1st of January 2020 Subject begins consuming SCP-6985 instance before midnight on 31st of December and finishes 5 minutes after midnight on the 1st of January, when recreational cannabis became legal in Illinois. Researchers are unable to perceive D432777 from 2335 to 2359, but anomalous properties of SCP-6995 instance cease and subject becomes visible at precisely midnight. Test confirms properties of SCP-6995 directly correlate to the effective date of loss. Addendum On the 19th of January, 2021, a series of containers branded with the Caliber Cognito logo arrived at four separate Foundation sites via internal mailing networks. Each contained boxed one-gram cartridges of concentrated cannabis with the logo on the individual boxes replaced with an extended middle finger. Inside each was a note reading, To the assholes during our products. Property testing of the cartridges revealed each contained dangerous levels of vitamin E acetate, a cutting agent found in some non-regulated vapor cartridges believed to be the primary cause of vaping associated pulmonary injury, or VAPI, all known instances of SCP-6995 purchased at adult use dispensaries do not contain this alteration. Five cartridges are kept for testing purposes and the remainder were destroyed via incinerator. Containment procedures updated to account for potential cannabis cognito shipments to Foundation sites. Item number SCP-6994 Object Class Euclid Update Explained Update Keda Special Containment Procedures SCP-6994 is to be contained in a larger quadric containment cell filled with 33 ppm salinity seawater. No recreation, comfort, or non-essential sustenance is to be given to SCP-6994 under any circumstances. Any SCP-6994 instances showing perceived resistance or malice towards Foundation staff should be executed immediately. Archive Special Containment Procedures SCP-6994-EX is to be monitored in its natural habitat. Members of Task Force Euro 7, Kings of Crabs, are to stop and redirect any fishing or commercial vessels attempting to enter the area. Description SCP-6994 is the species Bathonomus bathotonus, a form of giant isopod native to the eastern seaboard of the United States and Canada. SCP-6994 bears superficial resemblance to non-anomalous species of giant isopod, such as but an ominous gigantus, Bathnomus maximorum, and Bathnomus affinis. SCP-6994's biology deviates from other cephalopods 
in several key ways. SCP-694 possessed spinner eggs akin to terrestrial spiders and used them to secrete a viscous and adhesive fluid. SCP-694 used this fluid to build shelters as well as to construct sacks of water to aid in onshore exploration. In a manner similar to the diving bell spider, SCP-694 also had four large scythe-like forelimbs similar to mended terrestrial predators. These forelimbs are used primarily for bursts of locomotion as well as hunting and defense from predators. Lastly, SCP-694 possess almost human-like levels of sapience. SCP-694 utilizes a simple based communication method consisting of both written pictograms and in-person symbols and pantomime using the forelimbs. Addendum 1. During the construction on a more permanent on-site holding cell for SCP-694, new fossil records were found in the sea floor surrounding SCP-694's habitat. Such records indicate that SCP-694 was non-anomalous, merely an evolutionary relative of traditional aquatic isopods. These findings were considered dubious by head researcher Gerardo Bonnock, who ordered further research on the subject. A pair of divers captured and vivisected an instance of SCP-6994 to ascertain its biological makeup. DNA samples and physical similarities showed SCP-6994 was a direct evolution of ancient isopods, and it was deemed non-anomalous and reclassified as SCP-6994-EX. On July 17th, 2020, Four swimmers were reported missing at Salisbury Beach, Massachusetts. Following a further search, SCP-6994 spinner ed threads were located along with tracks leading to an SCP-6994 constructed cave approximately 700 meters offshore. The swimmers' bodies were found inside, vivisected, via SCP-6994's forelimbs and killed in a manner suggesting care and possible curiosity. Methods used by SCP-6994 appear identical to those used by Foundation agents during their initial dissection. Addendum 2 on May 8, 2021, Gerardo Balick reclassified SCP-6994 to Kedder, citing previously unseen evidence regarding the evolution of SCP-6994. Following this, more stringent containment procedures were enacted, following frequent callings and transferred to on-site containment. Access GitNet email. One new message. To Gerardo Bannock, Senior Researcher, from Odongo Dihani, Ethics Committee Chairman, Subject, SCP-6994-EX Dr. Bannock, as Ethics Committee Chairman, I know that separating emotions from your work is difficult, but this is too far. SCP-6994 is not anomalous, and to treat it as a threat for personal reasons is both dishonest and morally reprehensible. I know it's hard, but what you're doing is wrong. We've seen the documents you've put forward, the forged crash reports, the dubious containment breaches, the terrible things that these isopods have clearly never done. You want so badly for them to be some XK monsters, Gelato, but they're not. They're just bugs. Bugs that killed people, sure. Bugs that killed someone who you care about, but they're just bugs. We all make sacrifices. I know your daughter was on that beach that day. But when we take it out on the anomalies, it's too far. We secure and contain the anomalies, but we must also protect them. I'm moving to reclassify SCP-6994 back to EX.
Item number SCP-6017, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. It is currently impossible to determine the source of SCP-6017, and as such, fully contain this anomaly. For that reason, any Foundation employee with access to the central SCP database should be familiarized with this file. SCP-6017 manifestations can be detected and redirected from by artificial intelligences devised by the Project MOA. This process can last from 30 seconds for an active anomaly to an hour for the ignored SCP-6017 instance. For this reason, it is generally advised to cautiously interact with manifestation. If for any reason AI failed to redirect from an anomaly after 10 slides of compulsion to interact with SCP-6017 becomes unbearable, it is strongly advised to call for help. Attempts to aid unresponsive subjects are to be handled by the site security. For further assistance, contact members of Project MOA. Description SCP-6017 was discovered on BEEP at Site-19, and since then it has been appearing with increasing frequency. Its ability to bypass during initial manifestation any firewall deployed by Foundation and correlation to the central SCP database are under investigation. To contain or dispose of SCP-6017 Project MOA was established three months after the initial encounter with the anomaly. By beep deployment of artificial intelligence developed to detect SCP-6017 after manifestation yielded most promising results, as it is able to redirect from the anomaly to this file. SCP-6017 only appears on devices connected to the central SCP database and takes the form of a multiple-choice quiz. It consists of various panels composed of photos, corresponding questions regarding widely understood ecological knowledge, and six checkbox answers. Selecting at least one checkbox is necessary to proceed on to the next slide. A total of Beep individual panels have been catalogued by Project MOA. Further research has been deemed ineffectual. Questions appear in a fixed order and are universally shared between all SCP-6017 manifestations. However, it is impossible to determine which of the given answers are correct, or of the strongly affected by prolonged interactions with the anomaly expressly believe that answers will be verified at the completion of the quiz. SCP-1617 possesses mild mimetic influence on humans that gradually increases in intensity on further slides. Affected subjects gradually find themselves under compulsion to interact with the anomalous quiz. For 99.7% of the tested population, Symptoms of this effect are starting to be noticeable at panel 15 and slide 500 marks, the point where the urge to complete SCP-6017 manifestation becomes irresistible. By that time, affected subject stops responding to any stimulus other than a quiz and may react aggressively at attempts of separation from the anomaly. Without help, humans under the medical effect of SCP-1617 manifestations would surely perish. However, full recovery is possible with appropriate care. Addendum 1. Post-Discovery Interview Following interview was conducted on BEEP between researcher Andrew Ferretti and janitor BEEP, the first affected subject. Welcome, BEEP. I'm Andrew Ferretti, and I'll be conducting an interview with you about yesterday's occurrence. All right. I've been told you've recovered from the incident. You should be familiar with the protocol. Please state your name and occupation. BEEP. I've been working here as a janitor for over two years. Thanks. Let's start from the beginning. You missed yesterday's morning shift because of an unknown anomaly. Tell me everything you remember about it. 
So, it was about 10 minutes to 7.30. I was checking my assignment on PDAP, and then it just opened. It looked like a quiz about plants or something. I had some time to kill. I just gave a few answers and nearly completed it. You can check it. Sadly, your personnel database access point has been destroyed during your struggle to cooperate with the security team. But you were saying that you answered a few questions. Do you feel compulsion to do so? Have you noticed that you spent two hours on that quiz? I didn't know. I don't know. Maybe at first it was nothing. Later, everything is blurry. All right, relax. You're not in any trouble. We just want to know what happened. Do you remember how many questions you answered? Maybe a few hundred. I was so close. Close to what? To the end. To explanation. And that's what made you angry at the security team. That they were trying to stop you. I don't remember. But I didn't feel angry. Just incompleted. Just now, how are you? Do you still feel this way? I. Yes. Are you okay? I. Beep. Talk to me. Interviewee suffered a nervous breakdown and stopped responding. Following interviews were unproductive. Subject lost all memories about the incident. A psychic rehabilitation proved successful only after selective use of amnestics. Item number SCP-6017 Object Class Thalmio Special Containment Procedures Information about the true character of SCP-6017 is accessible only by members of Project MOA and O5 Council. Classified SCP-6017 Destination SCP-1617-F Entry to Database Based on the Incident PMI 30th of September 2017 has been provided to conceal vital to Project Mower Anomaly. Such precautionary measures allowed partial disclosure of Project Mower, while also providing substantiation for its existence and allocated resources. Controlled propagation of strong SCP-6017 effect among human population is considered desirable in the long-term foundation strategy. To achieve such outcome, it is paramount to attain full mastery of this anomaly in complete secrecy from remaining paranormal organizations. Current efforts are concentrated on gathering additional data by surveillance of controlled populations at isolated and extraterrestrial foundation facilities. Moreover, Identification of SCP-6017 effects combined with methods of regulating them are still being investigated and refined. Description SCP-6017 was discovered on the 25th of May 2010 by Dr. Emily Windsor, at the time Chief Director of a research team studying multiple increase in rate of new anomalies occurrence. Due to health position and wide scope of administered operations, Dr. Emily Windsor noticed similar traits among most of the eminent personnel. This observation was later confirmed by additional tests and currently forms the basis of foundation knowledge about SCP-6017. Informality of research combined with unfathomability of anomaly character to the most of the erstwhile members of the O5 Council led to impediment in registration of SCP in Central Database. Only in 2017, this process was finalized and the anomaly was assigned Hidden Spot 6017, 
which currently contains falsified information and is widely accessible. In the same year, Project Moro was established to gather data and conduct research on SCP-6017. SCP-6017 affects all subconscious intelligent beings. However, strength of its influence varies based on the resultant of the multiple factors, mainly the level of integration with the local universe. It can be generally described as an ability to sense disturbance in the fabric of reality. Depending on initial strength of SCP-6017 effect and additional training of affected individuals, use of traits acquired due to this anomaly could counteract the number of cognitohazard and mimetic agents. In some extreme cases, foresight granted by SCP-6017 allowed for safe interactions with typically hostile corporeal anomalies. Currently utilized by Project Moral Method of Classification in Controlled Populations, is based on a checkbox quiz appropriately modified with mimetic agents combined with amnestics prepared by personnel under strongest SCP-6017 influence. All beings affected by SCP-6017 are categorized and assigned to one of three groups characterized based on strength of anomaly influence. S1 Standard, S2 Salient, and S3 Supreme. Any given population is expected to be composed of about 95% S1 group, whereas the remaining 5% is divided between S2 standing for roughly 99 percentage points and S3. With rapid growth of anomalous activity in the universe, it has been concluded that an increased population of salient and supreme individuals would greatly improve humanity's chances of survival. For that reason, the Foundation places immense value on cooperation with S3 class individuals, who are paramount to fully comprehend SCP-6017 effects. As for the 25th of May, 2021, our organization has in its ranks deep of such beings in prominent positions in Project Moa and O5 Council. For research on creating beings under SCP-6017 influence, Project Moa is substituting organic life forms by deploying conscious artificial intelligence due to its vast development cycle and high compliance factor with human mentality. Initially, reality angles were used to stimulate growth of SCP-6017 effect in tested populations. However, it was quickly discovered that such solution could not provide required levels of reality and lacked any sufficient guidance. Based on a new theory of multiple realities universes, a reality control device has been built for project mower use. New hardware allows to create and sustain in controlled manner local super reality by overlaying matching realities. By the 25th of May 2021, Project Moa has been able to create, under experimental conditions, a population of 1100 CAI, consisting of groups S1 and S2 in the ratio of 3 to 7 respectively. Testing in human clones is to begin in the second phase of Peterborough Dawn Operation. Addendum 1, first vote to allocate a place in the database. Vote took place on the 20th of July, 2010 on request of Dr. Emily Winsor. Yay! Nine! Nay! One! Three! Four! Five! Six! Seven! Ten! Eleven! Twelve! Absent! Two! Eight! Thirteen! By an overwhelming vote, the proposition was rejected. Additional comments from 051. We cannot allow our database to be grounds for personal project repository with little to no regards to science. Addendum 2, second vote to allocate a place in the database. Vote took place on the 15th of March, 2017, on request of 051. Yay! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13. Against none, absent none. By a unanimous vote, the proposition was accepted. Additional comment from 051. This vote starts a new chapter in Foundation history, one where we can take full advantage of our enormous potential to help humankind. And at number three, note to Project More members from the old five council. Welcome aboard. We are glad to have you with us in this troubling time. With your expertise, Project More and any more similar undertakings will serve to improve humanity. All of you can rest assured that you can return to a better Earth with the conclusion of the fourth phase of Beautiful Dawn Operation. For we have been dying too long in the dark without giving the light away. Addendum 4. Notes on the incident. PMI. 30th of September, 2017. First implementation of the checkbox quiz to test Foundation personnel for strength of SCP-6017 effect lacked integrated failed safe. Investigation revealed that in certain scenarios, tests can be completely decoupled from uploaded separate control software. Such a situation took place at 7.21 a.m. On the 1st of October, 2017, during evaluation of SCP-6017 influence on James Smith, janitor of Site-19, incident was resolved with help of local mobile operator Andrew Ferretti. Following interview was conducted 20 hours after James Smith was apprehended. Welcome James, I'm Andrew Ferretti, and I'll be conducting an interview with you today about today's occurrence. Alright. I've been told you recovered from the incident. You should be familiar with the protocol. Please take your name and occupation. James Smith, I've been working here as a janitor for over two years. Thanks. Let's start from the beginning. You missed yesterday's morning shift because of an unknown anomaly. Tell me everything you remember about it. So, it was about 10 minutes to 7.30. I was checking my assignment on PDAP, and then it just opened. It looked like a quiz about plants or something. I had some time to kill. I just gave a few answers and nearly completed it. You can check it. Sadly, your personal database access point has been destroyed during your struggle to cooperate with the security team. But you were saying that you answered a few questions. Do you feel compulsion to do so? Haven't you noticed that you spent two hours on that quiz? I didn't know. I don't know. Maybe at first there was nothing. You know, everything is blurry. All right, relax. You are not in any trouble. They just want to know what happened. Do you remember how many questions you answered? Maybe a few hundred? I was so close. Close to what? To the end, to explanation. And that's what made you angry at the security team, that they were trying to stop you. I don't remember, but I didn't feel angry, just incomplete it. And now, how are you? Do you still feel this way? I, yes. Are you okay? I, James, talk to me. Due to quick actions of research already, all evidence leading to the true nature of SCP-6017 and Project Moral involvement was disposed of. To prevent further questioning, James Smith has been administered selective amnestics. Based on this incident, a false entry in the central SCP database was created. Link to falsified SCP-6017-F is placed below.